And there are many beings that I connect with who have a lot to say to humanity. So I'm just tuning into them and seeing what they would like to say. So my name's Jack Morrigan. Um, it's been an interesting journey, like how I've got to this point. Um, I think in my soul, I was always called to be this. Um, but I didn't know, I didn't have any um, like reference point for this when I was young. And then I started to have um, awakening experiences in my mid-20s, um, quite spontaneously. Um, so I went from being an atheist to having these really profound experiences that I didn't really know what they were. Um, and I started to explore those in more detail um, and followed some spiritual teachers that eventually led to me having a kundalini awakening. Um, which was very, very intense. It was uh, like a near-death experience. Um, and after that, my mind became opened to these different levels of consciousness so that I could um, see and feel things that I couldn't before. I could see and feel energy. I could communicate with um, nature beings, with trees, with um, supernatural beings and deities. And that eventually evolved into me being able to work with people to heal them. So when I look at somebody, I can see their energy and I can see if they have blockages in their energy field. I can tune into that and sense them. And then I can use the openings of awareness that I have to support their body to heal. And I think most of our problems as human beings are created because we uh, feel alone, you know, and we don't have people around us who can really witness us in our pain. So it's a very deep form of witnessing when I'm literally experiencing what they're experiencing. Um, but another way is that I channel these beings that I formed connections with. So um, there are deities and dragons that I've formed connections with through these experiences. And I can channel them, which means that they use my body and my mind uh, to speak and work with people. So that being will t temporarily take my body and use my body, and then they will guide people. And those sessions are really profound and beautiful. Um, because these beings have such a deep understanding of life and spirituality and that they're able to offer a, a powerful and unique form of guidance and healing. So how can spirituality cure diseases? It's a fascinating question Like for me as someone who's trained in medicine and psychology and counseling and now works as a professional spiritual healer. I find that a really profound question. And I think the, the simplest answer is that our body responds to our mind and our mind responds to our spirit. So most diseases, possibly even all diseases, can be traced back to a state of spiritual disconnection and our body is responding in a, a natural way to the experience of that disconnection. Um, so it, there's, a, there's a lot of evidence showing that there are links between emotions and many different diseases. Um, I need to fact check that, but that I'm pretty sure that there's evidence pointing towards anger and rage and cancer, like repressed rage leading to an increased risk of developing cancer. And in my experience, many forms of rage are resulting from a frustration within our psyche that we are not experiencing the deep love that we actually are. And we feel a subtle sense of rage about that because we feel abandoned by God. 
And so there's, you can follow these links back and see how physical illnesses can be caused by spiritual disconnection. And then, well, how does spiritual healing work? Well, I'm tracing back those steps when I'm working with people to reforge those connections so that their spirit, their psyche can feel more connected, which creates a sense of ease in the body, which reduces stress, which then aids physical health. And sometimes it can be quite profound and sudden with somebody um, having suffered some physical condition for some time and it just disappearing. There are some things that will be able to be healed and some things that won't be able to be healed. But the, the gift of spirituality and a spiritual perspective is the acceptance of both of those things. So you may be struggling with your health, but your struggle with your health doesn't need to be a problem for you. So we, within the conditioning of our minds, we make our health a problem for ourselves. And that can go be really deeply rooted in our psyches. Um, but there's a freedom that we can find within ourselves as we start to realize that we are not only our body, where we don't need to cling on to our body and our health so much. We don't need to put so much pressure on ourselves. And that creates more ease in our bodies, which helps us to be healthy. You know, it, it may cure us of diseases to have that state of mind, but you don't, it's like you don't enter into that with the intent of curing a disease. It's more like um, choosing to have a different perspective about your life and who you are and to give yourself freedom, freedom. Because I, you know, I relate to that. I relate to physical pain. Um, since my Kundalini awakening, I've been in physical pain like almost every day, and I am in physical pain right now, like in my body. Um, so I'm I'm in a young body, but my young body is in a lot of physical pain that is usually what only older people would experience. And sometimes that frustrates me. Sometimes that makes me angry. Sometimes it irritates me. Yeah, my ex-partner pointed out to me that maybe this is happening to me so that my consciousness could become more embodied. You know, maybe it's helping me in certain ways. And it is. Like, it. sometimes life gives us difficult lessons that we need to learn from. Um, and that's true if you're older and you're suffering from, from health conditions. They can be an opportunity to learn. My teacher once, um, she used to give uh, palliative care. So she used to help people who um, had terminal cancer. So they, they were going to die. And she, everyone knew this person was going to die. So my teacher would visit them and just give them spiritual advice or just sit with them quietly. And in her book, she has a, a story of this, this woman that she was doing this with. Um, and this woman had had, um, I think she had cancer in her tongue and her throat, and she'd had fa things removed and facial surgery and things, and it had disfigured her. And she had used to be a very beautiful woman, and she was very bitter. She was angry with God, and she um, was angry with my teacher and wanted to know why all this was happening. And my teacher had spent a lot of time listening to her and supporting her, being compassionate to her. And then one day she said something. This woman was again complaining, complaining. And my teacher felt this inspiration from from God, which spoke to her and um, it, it struck this woman, like that that was even a possibility. And she sat quietly for some time and eventually she opened her eyes and her eyes were like 
beaming and smiling and she had let go and she stopped trying to hold on to everything that she had been in the past and accepted what happened to her and she died a few weeks later um, but before she died she was just glowing the whole time because she had accepted her situation and I think that's what we need to do you know if you're old and you're suffering from difficult health conditions you can you can learn how to surrender and accept so I see meditation and prayer as like two sides of the same coin like often meditation is a way of um, gaining a deeper state of wisdom it it doesn't have to be that but for the sake of simplicity I'll say that it is so by going into still places within ourselves we can uncover the state of presence that we actually are and we can reveal ourselves to ourselves in a way that means that we aren't fully confined to our bodies anymore and that can bring a great relief to us like oh thank god like all of these problems all of these overwhelming feelings that's just a ripple on my surface but i am beyond them so that's a great sense of relief and then prayer like devotional prayer to me is this other side of that spiritual journey that forms it like ignites the heart like the passion of the heart like this devotional love to the divinity that we are um so instead of it being kind of cold and like a cold recognition of who we are which is like wisdom instead there's like a devotional outpouring of love for who and what we are which i find in devotional prayer so those two things they unite us with our divinity they unite us with our, what what we are and to be united with what we are is to alleviate us from a huge burden uh, of stress and to live in alignment with everything which is a much more fluid and natural way to be the law of attraction can be very useful um and it like any teaching it has its benefits and its limitations so it has these benefits because um we are the creator of our world you know we are the presence that creates everything so when we are consciously using our minds to create we can create what we desire however um anyone who's practiced the law of attraction will know that it doesn't always work and for some people that's you know it works less than for others and they may be very frustrated with that and wonder why that is and one answer to that question is that there are many levels to us as beings so you might consciously desire more wealth when another part of you actually strangely desires to be poor it's um, a strange thing about us as human beings that we have these shadowy parts of us that we uh, push into our unconscious and these parts of us are just as creative and powerful or if if not more so than our own conscious mind um so we end up entering into a battle with ourselves um and that's a battle that we can't really win if our unconscious self is is wishing the opposite of what we're trying to manifest through the law of attraction so um one thing that i do when i work with people um is to help them go into their unconscious to see what is actually there and to help it to release um, and that through that release then you have a lot more power that you can use to 
manifest with things like the law of attraction. When something bad happens in our life, we tend to feel like um, we're a victim, like life has done this horrible thing to us, you know, and then how, how do we recover from that? And it, it's usually coming from a place of a lot of resistance inside of us um, and pain, like, why did this happen? I wish this didn't happen. It's horrible that this has happened, you know? And there, that's one way of viewing the situation, but we can view it in other ways as well that will help a lot more. One way to view it is to expand our awareness out and look at a bigger picture and to wonder just to be curious and enter a state of possibility and wonder. I wonder if life has given me this experience to help me. I wonder if life has given me this experience to help me. Because maybe this is a trial, maybe this is an experience that is designed to reorient you, to reorient you back to alignment with your soul. And maybe you've been living out of alignment with your soul for a long time. So coming back into alignment feels strange, it feels unusual, it feels painful. Maybe there are things that need to be cleaned up in order for that to happen. But the way that I see it, everything is motivated by love. Everything. And no matter what painful situation we're going through, and I go through plenty of those, we need to remind ourselves that there is a deeper love and a deeper intelligence at play, and to put our faith in that. Um, that can be a big ask at times. Um, but it's... you. You can experiment with it to see how different it feels to reframe the negativity with possibility. And there are many beings that I connect with who have a lot to say to humanity. So I'm just tuning into them and seeing what they would like to say. The darkest part of the night that will bring the dawn of a new consciousness to humanity. It is only a matter of time. It will be difficult, but take heart in the fact that it is difficulty for a purpose. There is a reason behind it all, and it is a reason motivated by love, a love for us, for us to remember the love that we are and return home, which we will do. Thank you for listening and for hearing my message. I'm grateful to you for being here and um, talk to you soon.